Folks, welcome to your week. Let's do this all over again. Hopefully you can uh, focus on something other than Kate Middleton as we try to take you through some of the pop culture stories, some of the Bravo shows, everything that's happened in the past week and what is to come with one of your favorites and mine, the one, the only, the soon to be married, Sophie Ross. Welcome back. Hi. Hey, what's up? Hi. Hey, guys. New, New segment on So Bad It's Good, Wedding Watch 2024. Where are we? Oh in my god. The, the wedding prep. You guys, wedding planning sucks so much. Like, <laughs> why did no one warn me? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm I think actually- every movie has warned you. Like, have you seen Father of the Bride? <laughs> it it tears people apart. I also like used to work for a wedding magazine. So, like, if anything, I should know. But um, I'm actually going to Charleston in a few weeks for our tasting, which I'm excited oh. about. So I'll be on. Austin watch. I don't know. That's the oh, first Austin, Yeah. Austin Kroll watch. You got to get, go to the pillow store, go to sewing down yeah, South. All the I, things. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about having our after party at Republic just for like the, you know, the bit. Like I feel if like you do it. No, I'm serious. If you do it, let me know so I can uh, reach out. No, oh, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not joking. Oh my God. Okay. Let's, let's touch base. Let's touch yeah, base. Um, well, by the way, we do know wedding planning is hard because we see what Carl and Lindsay are going through on Summer House, and it, it is it's tearing them apart, obviously. Oh, my God. Um, oh, you yeah, are rec- yeah, yeah. Sophie's recuperating from a stomach, a violent stomach bug from Friday night, so she is with yeah. us barely. You almost died. I don't know like where what happened, where I got it, um, but I did just go on a bachelorette party. It wasn't my own. It was someone else's in Mexico. And my stomach is getting <laughs> there, a hey, little ding dong. There it is. Yeah, it's been a little iffy since then. But what's funny is that um, it was a bachelorette party of my college friend, and there were some girls there that I hadn't met before. She lives in LA, and I was talking about you know how much I love LA. There were like some of her new LA friends, and I was like, I love LA. But the problem is the only people that I know in LA are the bride, and then. Ryan, my podcast co-host, Ryan Bailey. And I like mumbled your, I was like, that's so embarrassing. Why am I saying like, a <laughs> name? like, Ryan like Bailey. Everyone know who you are. And then one of them was like, oh my God, Ryan Bailey. She was like, oh my God, you're, you're that Sophie Ross. No so, way. Yeah. How funny that's is insane. that? How funny I like you, you, you mumble my name like Ken coming in talking about a jacuzzi and rig- <laughs> Did you know Ron Villas and jacuzzi? Well, that. I was like, that's oh. so embarrassing that I'm like, Ryan Bailey, have you heard of him? I was like, that was so <laughs> weird. Like, why did I say that? But she was like, oh my God, Ryan Bailey. So, hi, Liz. Wow. Listening. Shout out, Liz. Was Liz like, that guy's a creep. That guy, oh, uh, what a creep. Uh. No, she's a huge fan. She's well, huge hello, fan. Liz. Hello, Liz. Welcome so, to your so week, that Liz. Was fun. That was a fun little moment. But yeah, anyway, my stomach. Well, by the way, when I was in Chicago, your sister DM'd me like right when I was like leaving for the airport to oh, head yeah. back. But I would have, I didn't realize, I forgot your sister lived there. But if yes. I go back, I, I'll definitely meet up yeah. with her. Yeah, she was like, oh my God, I want to hang out with Ryan. He's in Chicago. And I was like, yeah, like reach out to him. Um, we hit we hit all the gay bars that weekend, so I don't know if your sister frequents uh, all. Uh, oh, she would have that. been down mom's night out for yeah. sure. <laughs> no, that was I was just I was doing a Patreon episode where it's like one of the guys at my buddy's birthday. It was like they did a big birthday party, and he was like nice to me. But then the next day, we were at a gay like a karaoke gay bar where they're doing karaoke, and he said, "Oh, you're the Ryan Bailey from the Bravo, the So Bad It's Good." And then he was like way nicer to me. He was way nicer to me from that point. I was like, fi- I was like finally, I get like, uh, it's like finally something. It's like getting a, like oh, a reservation. You have cloud. You have cloud. Yeah. <laughs> cloud. Yeah, exactly. Another, another life update is that I've gotten extremely into Survivor. Okay. I, I, I Are you, I'm watching the season two. I'm not watching the current season. I feel like I should, <laughs> I'm starting. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh my God. So, so you're saying, I, I was like, great. Season. We can talk about Survivor. You're like, no, old Survivor. No, I'm talking about old Survivor. So Sandra's season, Pearl Island is on Netflix. And I actually watched that season when I was like 12 or like 11. And so I had seen it. I remember watching the Johnny Fairplay grandma reveal like live. Yeah. And I did not make the connection. That was Sandra's season. So that's on Netflix. And I just finished Palau season 10. Tom, Palau. the firefighter. Was on, spoiler alert. Spoiler it alert. Sounds, it sounds like an exercise. Palau. Palau. What is Palau? Palau. It's like a Pacific Island. 
Um, okay. But that's season 10. With oh, Survivor Palau. I thought you meant like another show you're watching called no, Palau. I thought I'm it was like a still soap opera. on the subject of Survivor. Okay, sorry. Keep up. Yeah, Keep I up. So moral of the story is since I got this stomach bug, I my fiance is very like his dad's a gastroenterologist. So he knows how to, he's like very strict with me. He's like, you can have chicken broth. You can have rice. Mm. You can have bread. So that's like all I've had all weekend. And we found out that I can also have chicken, like the mm. actual like chicken. So he went to Whole Foods and got a rotisserie chicken. And I was like, I feel like I just want a reward on Survivor. I was like eating it with <laughs> my <whole> hands. <laughs> By the way, I'm watching current Survivor and the thing that like, you know, what pisses me off sometimes is they used to focus like, I want to see more of the fishing. I want to see more of them collecting the food and do like they cooking not do the that? food. That's why I feel they, like they old do Survivor it. is the best. Yeah, old Survivor do. used to do all of that where they would yeah. be like, like showing the hunt for the food. Do they, they not get the do fishing that anymore? Gear. Like very minimally. It's like so much gameplay, but I don't have any stomach flu and guess what I watched the entire weekend? Um... Oh my God. Uh, Dune two. No, I watched Dune one last weekend and I loved it. I just haven't gotten out to the theaters to see Dune two, but I've watched, I loved the traders, the, obviously the celebrity version. So oh. I finally started the UK version. I made it through the first season and the first six episodes of the second season that are out on Peacock. And then I just started traders, Australia. I'm Wait. on the first episode of that. Is UK on Peacock? Yes. And it's oh. so like, uh, listen, Henry, I still I love know this what we're doing tonight. I love the celebrity version, but there is so much gameplay in the, like they go at each other. And the second season is already better than the first season. And I love the first. So you guys high recommendation. I'm so into the traders right now. I think it is. And, but oh, uh, last week I went to this, um, Oscar viewing party thing and I met Sandra from traders. I met Sandra. Okay. I met Sandra pilot Pete. Uh, Mercedes, who I knew already, um, uh, the, uh, Janelle from big brother. And I got to talk to them and uh, Sandra, by the way, Sandra has these like braces as you can see. Yeah, so I used to, I would do Sandra voice. It's like, what's going on? Everybody It's crazy here. And, um, which I, I would never do to her face obviously, but she's amazing. But I said, Hey, consider coming on the show sometime. And in classic Sandra fashion, she's like, what, what else is there to talk about at this point? I was like, great. That's a great <laughs> solid point, Sandra. You're right. But like I said, we could talk about your past. Like you've won survivor this many times. I was like, it doesn't have to just be traitors. And, uh, she was, she was hysterical, but I love Sandra and Kate Chastain was on the podcast this week. And I got to talk to her more about the, the gameplay and all of that stuff. But I am so in to the trader still. So you guys need to go check out past seasons. It all started in 2022. I thought some, this had been going on for a while overseas, but it's all like in the same like frame of time. Honestly, I have such a newfound respect. I mean, I've always respected Sandra because I know, you know, just everyone talking about how she's one survivor twice. Like that's obviously not easy, but after just like watching her first season, Pearl Islands, like that she's is a, so she's hard. A beast. To win Survivor is, like, extremely hard, obviously. Like, I feel like maybe I should sign up. Like, I don't know. Like. Oh, my God. That would be incredible. I, God, I, I, the, I, the challenges would take me out. There's just no way my body would function physical, for any of the challenges. That's the thing. Like, I don't have, like, the athlete card, like, the physical stuff. I don't, I don't think I would outplay, but I think I could outwit. You know? I can outlast. Like I can be in misery for a long time. It's been years now for yeah. me and I'm able to sit here in misery. So it's, I can yeah. totally do that. Yeah. So uh, if anyone listening, like know someone in survivor casting, like please. Sophie, I, I do know somebody in survivor casting survivor and big brother casting. They do both. I do know. If oh, you're yeah. serious, I could, I, I mean, I'm like dead serious. I'm like 1000% serious. Yeah. I went and saw a, uh, my, you my, see how uh, serious my face just got. Yeah. She's very guys. If you can't see, she is so serious. My friend took me to a black keys concert a couple of years ago and he was there and, uh, and he, you know, I was like, no way. And I started watching survivor again a couple seasons ago. And I used to love that when it first came on and I've re fallen in love with it. And especially it's good to watch reality competition after you watch so much reality yeah. that's melted your brain. Yes. Reality competition shows. I re I think the traders, I told you about claim to fame, which <laughs> ABC. Guys, watch claim to fame already. If you haven't <laughs> the traders. And I realized, I was like, what do these shows have in common that I'm obsessed with? They're reality competitions. Yeah. Survivor, obviously, is the natural progression. And 
it's just so good. It's so yeah. Good. I don't think I could. I, I I think on traders I could be a faithful. I don't think I could be a trader. I think my mm. it would make my stomach hurt at night. And yeah. did you? I mean, listen, we'll get off the traders because I know it's past. But like, what did you think about Trishel and CT winning? <sighs> I mean, they you can't say they didn't deserve it. Like, Trishel was working her ass off. Trishel she was, was actually working her ass off. She's just so annoying. Um, <laughs> I do appreciate. Uh, I do. And I also did watch um, Real World Vegas. I rewatched that like yeah. last year, yeah. which was that was like before even um, Trader Season 2 came out. Yeah. But um, Trishel was working her ass off. She deserves it. She also acknowledged the fact that she clearly has some kind of unconscious unconscious bias. bias. And she acknowledged that. So I respect that she acknowledged that on Twitter. Um, uh, CT. How can hey, you not what's love going on? How you doing? Like CT, by the way, she he's the one that made that death decision towards Mercedes. And I feel like Trishel got the majority of the backlash for that. But what, what Sophie's referring to on Watch What Happens Live, she talked about this. She started taking unconscious bias training and like one-on-one -on -one classes because of potential moves that she made towards Peppermint in uh, Traders and certain moves and certain behaviors she's had her entire life. So I totally dig that she's facing that. Trishel was going Trishel was going to come on the podcast last week, but she's done so many podcasts that I said, let's space it out a little bit. Cause I would just, I want to know more about the intricacies of the traders. And like, I think it's interesting that she was a poker player. I think it's interesting. There's so many little tidbits, but I think that's, I mean, kudos to her for facing that dead on because there was so much hate for Trishel once she won that. And I was like, CT in the game made the, like the really hardcore decision. But I thought there was something nice about two MTV people winning. Yeah, I mean they're gamers. They're gamers. gamers. Like, Let's not call them gamers. Oh gamers. gamers. You, but they gotta call reality gamers. It's not they're gamers, reality gamers. Stop. But also Trishel like played slash plays poker professionally. Yeah. Like she is a gamer. Like well, no, she no, game. she is a gamer. And by uh, CT on that final mission, I love that. That's where he comes alive. He's like, I've been training my whole life on challenges to do this. Let's it go, actually let's is go. So funny. I think I like took a gummy or something. I was like high watching it, and I was like, it's so funny to think about how these like grown like forty year olds are in wetsuits, like climbing over rocks to get some like fake treasure chest like no, that's it. and that's their entire life like that's how they depend on their paycheck year to year like oh so seriously like ct he is a uh by trade a reality contestant it's like and that's how do you get a job after that well it's like oh oh hey mr bananas oh no mr bananas was my dad please call me johnny like i mean like what is, like we actually have a grown man calling himself johnny bananas who's now uh he's now wearing three-piece suits anytime he shows up to a place i like with the evolution <laughs> yeah, of like, johnny bananas he's so annoying i'm so glad he got murdered first. <laughs> um but i i will say that i think they need to raise the stakes because especially after watching Survivor. So think about Sandra's season, which aired in, I think, 2004, 2003 Jeez. or 2004. Really? That long ago? 20 years ago. Wow. The prize was $1 million in 2004 money. Just and Traders is only fucking $100,000. Just for, and split. And it's, the Traders is what? It was a court, it was a quarter of a million dollars split between two people after taxes, after paying their like managers and their talent team, yeah. like they walk away with nothing. Like who cares? That's what I said when Alan's like this, this uh, embarrassment of riches could set you up for your entire life. I'm like, no, I couldn't even set you up for the next three months. And yeah, that they do the same thing on the, the UK version of like, this money could change your life. And it's like, no. And people are like, what would you do with the money? And like, these people are like, well, I would build my mom a house. And then I would like, you're like, uh, stop it. Like half of a house. You couldn't do well, anything the non, more. The non-celebrity is yes. The actual, like the fact that like some of these people are like semi famous and like MJ, for instance, is already wealthy. Um, like, but in this economy, like that, Getting a I know. Of like maybe like at the end of the day, like forty thousand dollars. Cool. They, like they need to bump it up. I mean, you guys, the Whole Foods rotisserie chicken. That's so like how expensive. much that costs now. So I mean, you get one drink at uh, Arrow One, you're done. It's like one 
traders winning is like one shake at era one in LA. Right. Like there's it's done. So anyways, I love the traders. I highly recommend watching the other versions. The gameplay is so much better and I am finally fully in, but we had so much stuff happen this week and I'll try to blend Bravo and actual pop culture stories. Uh, before we get into the Bravo of it, we got our first look at Timothy Chalamet as a young Bob Dylan. He's dressed like a, a chimney sweep in London He's in 1860. No, he's dressed like Kira Knightley in Love Actually. <laughs> it's boho chic. Like <laughs> Timothy, Ch what's going on? It's me, Bob Dylan. And I, I'm like, I, uh, it looks like Timothy Chalamet in boho chic. It, it, I was just like, okay, yeah, there's Timothy Chalamet dressed as a young Bob Dylan. So they finally started filming that movie in New York this week. And like, I, I finally watched Dune last week and I am fully in. I'm, I'm a Dune head. I am fully in on Dune. I, wait, I well, cannot wait to not, go see Dune 2. Had you not seen the first one? No, you know what? I, I watched 40 minutes of it when I was like tipsy going to bed years ago and I just didn't, I didn't feel it. And then last, I had a nice day where I put together Legos last Saturday and watched Dune and I oh. loved it. I was like, I love this. So I can't wait to see Dune 2. Yeah, no, we actually wanted to see Dune 2 this weekend. And then we remember that we have a dog that just got neutered. So we can't leave him alone yet. And we were like, Baxter ruining our fucking plans. What That's what happens when you have kids. When you have kids, this is the insanity. You're going through wedding planning, raising a kid dog. It is so oh much. Oh my God, it's a lot. Um, yeah, I I was not, I, I will admit it. I don't pretend to know what's going on when I watch Dune. But... <laughs> I do enjoy the movie. So much sand. There's yeah. so much sand. So many worms. I so much. Did spite. you see Ben Affleck and J Lo going to the movie theaters and Ben Affleck cleaning up their like popcorn and like so like yeah. like somebody had video of them seeing Dune two and like the pop it looked like J Lo hadn't even touched the popcorn. I was no, like, that's like so sad for his, for his Dune popcorn bucket. Where you? Yeah, like with my bucket, dude. Come on, let's with my fucking bucket. Um, I can't oh wait to see God. Dune 2. I'm so excited. Um, okay. So the Oscars were last week as well. I got to tell you, I, I, I've watched that. I am Ken performance more than I'm comfortable in admitting. I keep watching it. And I, now on TikTok, I've watched it now from all these different angles because everybody's like filming the, I am Ken Ryan Gosling in the actual, you know, Dolby theater. I, did you like the, I am Ken at the Oscars? Um, yes, I did watch it, but I couldn't watch the Oscars live because I was, I flew back from you, Mexico. Oh. So I couldn't watch the Oscars. And then also, you know what? I am so sick of Jimmy Kimmel. Why? 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 No, but why? You felt this way about Jimmy Fallon years ago. Now it's on to Kimmel? No, you know that Jimmy Fallon and I are friends. Okay. <laughs> That's my friend. <laughs> All right, wait, guys. Just to remind you, there was there was a tense interaction once with Jimmy Fallon where Jimmy Fallon asked Sophie to personally not make fun of him. And then Sophie thought they were buds and said, hey, would you like to smoke with me sometime? I, wasn't that the story? It was something like that. But the fact that I was like, hey, it was like a long conversation. So it wasn't just like, want to yeah. smoke weed? I was no, like, I didn't know. But it was just I funny. Know that they smoke, I know Everyone knows Jimmy Fallon smokes and does other stuff, obviously. But <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel... Why? Why does he always host the Oscars? Why? I thought he wasn't bad. I thought he was fine. He was. I thought. I, I, what? What did you he's hate about Jimmy? Fine. Kimmel? I just. I'm tired of him. Like he's boring, <laughs> and he has kind of that. Just from what I was reading, because again, I didn't watch the Oscars. Which ah, I this is just very reading. Bad, it makes me a very bad pop culture. Um commentator professor I, enthusiast yeah it really does like i i know how this looks i know it looks bad um but i from when i was reading that his jokes are still just kind of like making fun of everything and i know that's like what you do you like make yeah. fun of everything. it's like can we have like just one host who actually like likes movies you know what i mean and can still well, okay you know what well, i'm gonna get a lot of blowback on saying this i said this before and he just still has a lot of ill will with pop culture historians themselves i think john mulaney would kill it john mulaney i oh watched him host the creative I, it was the creative arts emmys i watched it on youtube and i was like this is a dude that loves movies like so many great inside jokes on top of just being like good for everybody he did a presentation at the oscars bringing up yeah. the uh, kevin costner film filled field of dreams which i thought was hysterical i think someday he will host which by the way anna marie tendler his ex-wife she announced her first book is done her, you know, nonfiction book about her story. And I think it's coming out in June, Anna Marie Tendler. And people are like, fuck John Mulaney. Fuck, you know, because 
you know, the Olivia Munn stuff, but Olivia Munn came out this week and revealed she had a double mastectomy that she has dealt with breast cancer this last year and a half, I believe. And, you know, is, is, as fought and, and things, but I just, that Anna Marie Tendler book is going to be potentially, I'll, I'll be very curious to hear her story, but people, yeah. people really, I like that. That's it. I, I can't tell if people want to hate John Mulaney or it's just Twitter. I don't hate John Mulaney. I think John Mulaney, you're right. would be a hilarious and refreshing host. And even like AD Bryant, for example, like she hosted. Oh, she was great. And the, uh, independent, yeah. yeah. And she was amazing. Like, why can't we just like have someone else? You know, well, I think you're going to get your wish. I think this is Kimmel's last year hosting the Oscars, but I didn't, I, mean, I watched you know, it. I didn't feel insider that. info. I was talking to Jimmy himself this week. No, I just, I, I heard his, I, I, but I, by the way, I did not mind him. So, but I do think Mulaney would be a great choice. And AD Bryant, you're right. I watched her opening and she was, she was hysterical. I, I didn't serious. even think she was good. Like, there are just so many like funny people that like have never hosted the Oscars and haven't already hosted 25 times, no less. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's, you know, let's yeah. get rid of him. Let's, let's whack okay. it. Also, uh, this was heartbreaking news for some people. I was very impressed by this, but uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard has taken herself off of social media. She actually made a very brave and bold choice and deactivated her Instagram and uh, uh, TikTok accounts. And I thought this was real. I was like, good. For, I was like, shit, she really, uh, she, that's a smart move. She says, real life is something you can touch, something you can feel, people you can actually hug. With the public public scrutiny as bad, bad as it is, I just don't want to live my life under a microscope. What did you think about Gypsy Rose Blanchard deactivating? Or do you think it's kind of like Jackson Brittany, where this is potentially just some sort of like underground marketing for her reality show that's about to hit Lifetime? Um, I wasn't seeing like, what was like this backlash that she was kind of, I mean, I understand that she like literally like well, went to prison. For murder. For, yeah. Um, I mean, that's a little bit of the backlash potentially. So like, is that what it was that she like, that people were saying that she's not like holding herself accountable as much as she should. I, I mean, she didn't specify fully, but I think it's that. I think the comments on her, ma her new marriage, you know, she, this is a person that had to come out and literally on social media said, don't listen to him, Ryan. The D is fire. Like literally said the dick is fire on social media. I think when you have that many opinions thrown at you and you all of a sudden get millions and millions of followers, that can really fuck with your head, especially if you're trying to like get totally. back to any sort of normalcy. Your, your whole life has never been normal. So I think that's an amazing move. I was just shocked because I thought she was going to try to turn into an influencer. An influencer. Influencer. Um, yeah, definitely an interesting move. I was not expecting that, but like, okay, good. Like, good, good for her. <laughs> yes, and but I, I kind of think I'm like, I, I just, I, I don't trust anybody anymore. So I think that I'm like, oh, maybe this is some sort of advertising. Eventually, like she'll come back because they're filming the reality show for Lifetime, like, you know, Just Gypsy or whatever it is. Oh. And I have a feeling it's that. Okay, moving on to some Bravo, finally. Just Gypsy. V Vanderpump yeah. Rules. Wait, sorry. What if like the no. gypsy like theme song was like on a Monday? Yeah, we, know, we, like, we, we, we talked about, we talked about this a couple months ago. Remember that it was going to be like the MTV show. And then you went and found uh, the, the scene from uh, that yes. show where you thought they were doing coke. And on they the were. Episode. They were. If you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. The Ashley Simpson reality show, you guys. Yes. In the premiere when her and her mom are literally like cutting lines of coke. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that actually is a perfect segue to Vanderpump Rules. Uh, Sophie, what did you think of uh, one of my new favorite characters, Joe. Joe? Just Joe, just Joe. Beep boop, beep boop, beep. beep. Oh, Joe. Oh, my finger. Cool. <laughs> like, first of all, what the fuck is this thing? Second of all, like she's a hairdresser, but like has some of the worst, driest, most brittle hair that I've ever You've got to separate the art and the artist. The art and the artist. It's two different things. <laughs> you know, you're right. Good when point. she goes to your, her, like her frowny face, it looks like Chelsea from Love is Blind when she frowns. Like, mm. Mm. Um, I. <laughs> beep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Um, if pull my I, finger was a person, that is Joe. She is. She is pull my finger personified. She's like that. Ooh, I'm 
I'm a millennial. Like that. Well, no, like, she, oh, she, you know, she's the meme with the girl with the potato chips on her head of like, my friend is so crazy. She's so crazy. I love her. So <laughs> I think that um, Joe is obviously like in love with Schwartz. Oh, oh and- wait, what? Wait, where did you get that from? And Schwartz is kind of, like their relationship. I don't, I don't really get it. No, like, I think we get. I think you nailed it. I think we get it. I think she's he, in love with him. She's in love with him. He kind of keeps her at arm's length and like also keeps her around when he like wants to bang. Um, I like yes, sure. Yeah, I don't know. Well, like, I, have some self respect, Joe. Stand up, stand up. Like, get up, stand up, stand up for your rights, Joe. I think it's shitty of Schwartz. If they are such good friends, why would you ever subject your friend to being on a reality show when you already know in your personal life how she is taken by other people? Like how she is like, you know, other people like Katie called her like big crackhead energy. You already know how people respond to her. Why throw her in a show knowing that she is going to be the subject of thousands and thousands and thousands of comments like what we're doing right now? Why would you ever do that to her? Katie last season was like, everyone fucking hates Joe. And I was like, well, of course Katie would say that. And now it's like, okay, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Wow, Katie. I mean, holy shit. She's really right. Well, uh, did you read the- did you read the uh, the Instagram post that Joe did for Schwartz? Wait, what was it? You didn't see. You had to. Okay, so I'm going to read this. I'm this sorry. I've been post. in Survivor World. I wow. Really I mean, you got to. Okay. She, Joe, my gosh, is her Instagram account. She wrote, been wanting to say this for a while and give me grace on how I say it. Everything about this human makes me happy. And it's like Schwartz in the picture. Have you ha- have you ever found a human that just gets you, makes you laugh, and has a genuine love for people the same way I do? That's Tom. That's me. We are always under construction and working on ourselves as humans. Tom Schwartz deserves the world, and so do I. I know him so well, and I'm so happy and grateful. Maybe I'm not the girl for him, but I get it. He is a really good example of someone living in the moment always, and so am I. Give him grace. Give me grace. And everyone is a work in progress. Progress. Let's add love to it because at the end of the day, Tom and I can lay our heads on our pillows and know we killed the day with kindness. Oh Please just God. know it's a good thing to see the best in people. And Tom and I see the best in each other and others. 10 out of 10 all around. Spread the love. Blessings to Tom Schwartz for helping me with my life and vice versa. What in tarnations? Find a person who can make you laugh all the time. That's Tom Schwartz. Tom, you humans out there are lucky to hang out with him. He will hate this post because it's a compliment to who he is, but someone has to say it. Tom, Tom has the best laugh, smile, and people should really know how kind he is. I'll love him forever. Joe, out. What do you think about that Instagram? I just, I just went to her Instagram to read it also while you were reading it to me. Um, my favorite part is the random, what in tarnation? What in tarnation? What a good tarnation. Find a person who can make you laugh all the time. What? What do you mean, what in tarnation? Like, where does that fit in in the spirit code? But by the way, this is where it would be appropriate to be like, and by the way, that D is fire. Oh my God. Joe. Well, because in this week's episode, the producer goes, How long has it been since you've been intimate? And Schwartz is like, uh, I don't know, like uh, a long time ago. And and Joe is like, Oh, just like a month ago. <laughs> like, on, so Joe. it's obvious that they, but I, I like Schwartz also, like, we've had to like reestablish boundaries. And now we just like cold kick it. Like, imagine if you were a girl and a guy goes, We just, we just kick it. Like, we just like to kick it. Also, um, did you mention that this caption is accompanying like a montage, like a video a montage? Oh. No, it's like a literal montage video of like. No, this was sent like, to me because I don't follow Joe and I don't. I mean, I think I might have even blocked her at a certain point. I don't know, but no, I, I, I didn't see. Joe. I didn't see. Uh, oh you my know. god! Now to the comments. But like, can I say that I want to see as much of her as I can? Like I want her in every scene for the re- last half of. Well, Vanderpump apparently, Rules this season. she's she's going to be at the reunion, right? They filmed it yesterday, Sophie. The reunion's yeah. already done. They filmed it. And Ariana, by the way, had to go on a red eye because she went back to Broadway to do two shows today. Oh, I met Ariana the other day. Yes. Wait, wait. So what What was it? You, you All of a sudden, Sophie sent me a picture of her with Ariana. And I was so, I was like, oh my God, Sophie's in Vanderpump Rules season 11. What happened? You were, and, and my mom was like, did you get your stomach bug from Ariana Maddox? And she was like, oh being no, accurate. don't spread that around. No, no, no. I didn't. I didn't, by the way. I got Scandaball hits again. Your stomach. <laughs> But um, my friend works at a bar in the West Village and was like, hey, we're having like a little like Ariana's doing like a meet and greet come. And then I was like, OK, I'm there. And then you were my in because I was like, hi. 
do you know Ryan Bailey? And she's like, of course. And she's talking about uh, how proud she is of you and how you're uh, killing it. And I said, me too. And sweet. yeah, she's like the cutest. And she's so small. She's nice. She's like the nicest she's also person. Just I mean, so small. I want to like put her in my pocket. Like she's really small in person. She's just like so. You didn't cute. say that to her, did you? Did you didn't say I no. want to put you in my That'd pocket? Be, like, did you? Expensive? Yeah. Who's the, hey? Who's that girl that you know that wanted to put me in her pocket? <laughs> she's like security. Yeah. <laughs> it was, but, um. Did you get any so something cute. about her dirt? Did you Did you ask about something about her? Like no, everybody I is. Feel like it's kind. Of, it has to be like kind of a sore subject at this point. Like, is it opening? Well, listen, I mean, like what I was curious is that even that truly thing that I think you were at, had, it was like a something about her truly camp. Yeah, it was a truly event at this bar. But it had something about her involved in it. So they You're also right, did the lay they, they, they did the Lay's promotion at BravoCon for the Lay's potato chips, something about her edition. So I don't even I, I'm sure we will find out at the reunion what the official thing is. Um, what what's really truly going down. But they filmed the reunion yesterday. Joe, Joe was there. Tom Sandoval and Schwartz went to Schwartz and Sandy's after the reunion. Ariana had to get on a red eye. Um, and Logan, who is one of Ariana's best friends, who's also a manager at Tom Tom. I've known Logan for years now. He tweeted. So they did the, um, the, the cast seating list yesterday and overnight Logan retweeted that and said, some of these people will not see heaven in regards oh, to some no. of the cast. So I'm, I think you got to be that Sandoval. I would imagine maybe like, I, I'm just wondering how I Sheena mean, did. That's, how that's Sheena obviously did. a given, but like what prompted that comment? Exactly. Well, obviously, so obviously whatever happened at that reunion was bad enough for Ariana's friend to be like, fuck these people or some of these people. Ooh. Well, my, my, my fear, like Sheena, I think she is like one big beating raw nerve and i just feel like she says things sometimes in the moment and i got to imagine if you're ariana to watch this back and also vanderpump like lisa vanderpump is in all of these people's ears about how amazing tom is oh my god tom what do you think so far about watching this kind of like everybody really has turned a corner on tom and tom hasn't even been that apologetic he's like these people no. owe me apologies dude no, he has like barely shown any accountability whatsoever. Like he feels completely entitled to everyone's time and forgiveness and friendship. And even like Raquel's like Raquel obviously is not innocent in all of this. But the fact that he in the last episode just feels so entitled. He's like, dude, she I've been waiting for a text. Apparently she's out of the she's out of the site board. And she hasn't even reached out, dude. Like, she can't even get she can't even give me an email for closure, dude. Right. Like, why do you think you're entitled to that? Like he oh, just Sophie, I literally lost my shit when I thought it was the funniest moment of the entire hour when Tom when Lisa was like, I don't it seems like she doesn't think you're good for her. And Tom was like befuddled, like, what are you talking about, dude? And I was like, Yeah, Tom can't even comprehend that he isn't good for Ray. It's like, dude, that's the one thing you should be like, I can totally see where she says that, but like he's like he does, he can't understand it. He's like, why would she think I'm bad for her? Like that's like, literally why would she think that? fathom it. He cannot fathom it. Um, I'm actually really surprised by how easily James has kind of like turned the page with Sandoval. Like they went to their little, like whatever it was, Frank Sinatra. Guys night, guys but night. But it was like Frank Sinatra themed, like at a Korean bar or Brazilian barbecue house. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was, it was, like Fogo, at, it was like Fogo, it was like Fogo to Chow. Yeah. They were at Fogo to Chow in like three piece suits, like Johnny <laughs> Bananas. <laughs> Sandoval literally is just like, I'll do any scene where I can dress up. I will do any scene where I can look <laughs> dapper and cool. Um, no, DJ James Kennedy has turned a corner, but if you watch the Vanderpump Rules after show on Peacock, you see that it's short lived because uh, DJ James Kennedy is talking with like with Brock in the after show. And he's like, oh my God, he's trying to give me these glasses. It's like, he, he, he bought them himself. He takes it off his face and gives it to me. Come on, dude. Like he can tell that. And Lala is very similar in the after show too, where they feel like they were even played by Sandoval this season. Cause Lala was talking about that Sandoval 
got her daughter like some gift and it wasn't even her birthday or something. But she was like, I can see through that. I'm like, I'm glad you can see through it now because it looks like one whisper from Lisa. And then all of a sudden you're telling Ariana that she can't be a certain way. And I'm like, dude, right. she can be however, like she already, and also this, like, I, I'm so tired of having this argument, but she already told people going into the season that she wasn't going to film with this dude. Why does everybody think that like, then all, all, she should back down because they're on TV. Like that shows you how real this is. I think. Right, right, right. What about Lala telling Katie to disengage? Disengage, dude. She's like literally trying to get another send it to Daryl. She's like, does that go on a sweatshirt? Disengage. She's like, stand down. Like what? Stand down. <laughs> Because well, Lala, by the way, Lala, that's where you can see Lala is a fan of Housewives. And I think she, that's why I think she would be so good on like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because she speaks like a younger housewife to me, where she speaks in like talking head. She speaks like in these like quippy little things, but Katie's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, it doesn't really like translate when you're like trying as hard as she is, I feel like. Well, I don't Katie, know. by the way, Katie has a bone to pick with Sandoval. She's not just Ariana's like, Stan, she actually has her, and I for you sometimes forget that Tom was like a big part of. I mean, their marriage and a certain like certain aspects of their marriage falling Wait. apart. Sandoval really encouraged. It was like that Princess Diana quote where she was like, "There were three people in our marriage." That was <laughs> Katie with with Schwartz and Sandoval. Yeah, like there literally were three people in their marriage. So yeah, and I understand completely why Katie like has this beef with Sandoval. So obviously. Um, and Sheena, Sheena being like, it's never about me. Poor Sheena, man. She it's just, never I, I about just... me. And, 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 and the I'm... Dancing with the Stars stuff. And it's like, were you even like, uh, listen, I think there's a world in which Sheena gets on Dancing with the Stars one day, but I don't even think she was like, like, give us more information. Were you like in, in cat, like were, was casting saying you were close or were you like just training for dancing just in case? Like, I think, and also I think it was just in case, like she was literally training, taking dance classes, like training just in case like well she is such a fan of that show that she knows that usually they get people that are like in the news at that moment which ariana was but also sheena if you go back like sheena used to like she was a real big fan of dancing with the stars she brought a weed pen into dancing with the stars years and years ago and she was like blacklisted from coming coming back to dancing with the stars and then she went to see teresa giudici perform and teresa giudici got her back in to like even watch but like there's a, an article sheena's talked about this so this isn't some big surprise or secret this was a long time ago so i thought that was hysterical you know what's so funny is that like I feel like Dancing with the Stars is that that like holy grail of like reality stardom. Like if you get asked on Dancing with the Stars, like for me it would be the Traders. I feel like Traders was eventually going to get there. I feel like that's going to be the one people want to get on. But yeah, Dancing with the Stars is that next level to actually make Why? you a household name. Is Dancing, I'm sorry, maybe it's just because I personally never watched Dancing with the Stars, so maybe it's like my own blind spot. But is it like that? No, well, what it is is that it's like, yes, Sophie, obviously Dancing with the Stars is extremely popular, but like, is it like that, like insane of a a show? Well, not the show itself, but I I will say there's some huge fans of Dancing with the Stars, but it's because it's on network television and network television is not what it once was because of cable and all that stuff, but it's still so many eyes. It's like SNL. Even if you hate SNL. If you're on there, it is such a huge boost for anybody. Dancing with the Stars is the same way. It presents you to a whole new audience. You actually get all of these new eyes on you. You get all of these new fans. So in that sense, it is huge. It really is. Like, I I even know that, and I don't like Dancing with the Stars. Okay, Um, that's fair. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. So anyways, I'm sure we'll get more breaking news about what happened at the reunion. Um, we'll see, you know, potentially I'm hearing rumors about Brock and Sheena. And we saw in the mid-season trailer that Sheena says that she doesn't picture yeah. that. And I, but I, I can't tell if that's Frankenstein editing. That, like, that had you know? to be Frank, Franken edited. Like, there's no way she said that. There's no way. Yeah, that would shock me. But at the same time, you ne- you never know. But I mean, I, I think they're fine, but who knows? Um, And then this Tuesday, you guys, after the misery of Vanderpump Rules, we have the C- series premiere of The Valley. The Valley, Jax Taylor and Brittany and Kristen Doty and Luke and Janet and Jason. I saw the first episode of this and by no means does it reinvent the wheel, but it's not bad. It's not Wait, it, yeah, like, what do you think? It's not bad. It's not like, listen, it is. 
Jax like being pompous and acting like he's a know-it-all is kind of what we want to see Jax do. And he does that immediately. Um, you see the cracks in even the new characters marriages. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I have, like that I think is good. Uh, Sheena and Lala make a, an appearance in the first one. Um, but I guys, I, 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 I'm not saying it's like, it's like the best thing since sliced bread, but it's not bad. Like I have a feeling it's going to have an audience past the first episode. So I, I actually liked it. I did not mind it. I, I mean, I'm in. Like, I know. Well, I'm, what do you think I, about the Jackson Britney stuff? What? Like, Britney is just at every opportunity. She's always, like, on some, like, random red carpet for something. No, that was for the Valley premiere where it was like, the, so this is why it, what Sobe's talking about, they did the Valley premiere on Thursday and they had a little, it was at Jax's Saloon. And they're obviously <laughs> separated. Britney moved to a second location which I, you know, don't even know why she had to move out, but whatever. But she's like, listen, you know, Jack, my Jack's like, he doesn't want to have sex with me and we just got to stand up and it's all about Cruz. And, you know, she seems very nice, but I'm like, we're almost being gaslit into thinking this is normal. Like in what world would you be on the same press line as your husband and just casually with when a smile on your face? He doesn't want to have, you could yeah, not water casually. that information out of me. That's what I'm like imagine and that and that's a storyline on this show like so imagine getting to that point where you're like well i gotta stick up for myself and he's got to make some tough calls but you know jacks and like you know jacks he doesn't want to put the work in and you're like talking about it so normally when i'm like i remember going through my divorce it was like there's no way we would be on a red carpet together where there's no way she's doing it with a smile on her face and i can't tell that's why i almost think this is even though i've been sworn that it's not i think it's manipulated or manufactured in some way because even the timing of this, like on the show, they are going to be dealing with these issues. But then there was a huge period of time that they had finished filming and we didn't hear anything about it. And then all of a sudden, two weeks before this show starts, all of these things kick back up. And I've been told that it's not to do with cheating. It's something else that you'll find out. But I just feel like this is, and, and remember, Jax Taylor is a producer on the Valley. He is a producer. He is one of the people that brought this concept to uh, to Alex Baskin at uh, the producer of Vanderpump Rules. So I think there's something like I just in what world would you be so comfortable talking about your husband not wanting to have sex with you? Because it's all for the show. It's all for ratings. But I yeah, feel like I feel like I'm going so crazy. If, there's only so much that a girl can take. Like, how, like, like I, that's like her go to line. It's like we've heard you say that to like 25 TMZ cameras at this point. Like give I, it a rest. I, well, no, and listen, I want to have empathy for Brittany. And obviously, like, we've seen Jax's... So that's why it's it's weird, because we can see... We've seen Jax fuck up so much. But just the timing of it all and the decision to move... Like, and I, I have so many questions of why she would move out as opposed to Jax. And, you know, just talking about it so casually. And Jax, Jax even on the interview goes, Hey, you know, we're a brand. We're fine. We're adults. We know our responsibilities. That's why we're out here doing this. You know, and I'm like, even that is, like, so weird of, like... We're a brand and that's why we're here and we're adults. I hate him. I hate we're adults. Him so he says we're adults and that's why we're doing it. And I'm like, you're adults and that's why you're talking about your per like I I'm so confused. I hate him so much. We're a well, brand. Like, you know, we just we're adults. We gotta handle it. We we just gotta be mature about this. Like, shut the fuck up, Jax. Like dude, I uh yeah, they, well, they're going to have a tough season. Um, Dodie already in the first episode has some great scenes. I think she's going to have a tough season. Um, Luke, her her Ooh. new boyfriend, who's really nice. He's like, like, but he's like spends most of his time in Colorado until recently. And that's like a big storyline of Jax is like, you want to have a kid, but you're not even willing to, to move down here yet. What are you like? It's it's really hysterical because Jax presents himself as the king of knowing things of like yeah, the king of marriage, king of like fatherhood, like being a dad yeah, like it's great like nick vial who just had a baby like last month like shout like, out those those are like the pinnacle of being a dad now like yeah. we have like two amazing role models to look up to when it comes to fatherhood <laughs> oh my god so okay so the valley i can't wait to hear what you think about it and what you guys think Ooh. about it so that Talk happened about how that one couple announced that they oh the lallies okay so there's a couple yeah. michelle lally i'm forgetting i think maybe adam lally anyways they're a couple on the valley and you can tell in this first episode that they really are not like i i was talking to somebody i was like oh you can already see the cracks forming but then they announced 
uh, the, the, the Thursday, the day of this premiere, that they are separating or separated. And you can tell exactly why they would be if you watch this show. And that one does not seem fake. That one does not seem scripted. They seem to really dislike each other and they have a child. But anyways, I, I really I really enjoyed the experience. Um, back to before we get to Bravo, a real quick uh, cleansing of the palate. Bruno Mars, the musician, potentially owes $50 million to MGM Casino. He is in $50 million of gambling debt. Bruno Mars, can, I mean, think about it. Bruno, Mar- did you know Bruno Mars was like a compulsive gambler? I mean, like, you know what? I love that. It feels very, <laughs> speaking of the Rat Pack, it feels- That's old Hollywood, very, baby. Old Hollywood, exactly. Good for him. Yeah, but like MG and he's now done it like this actually they say like you know makes it more known why he's done a nine year residency at MGM like he's literally been in a nine year residency and the fact I don't know how true any of this is but it says he pulls in 70 million dollars a year through this but he spent like he owes 50 million dollars to MGM through gambling so like that That's to me so is funny. so <laughs> sad like Bruno Mars like I said yesterday I was like I one time lost $300 on a wheel of fortune slot machine. And I was like, should I check into some kind of program? Like, should do I have a problem? But imagine $50 million, this Bruno Mars. He's like, don't believe me. Just one. <laughs> yeah. Don't believe. Yeah. By the way, what if it was all in penny slots too? He's a compulsive gambler at penny slots. He's like, no, but I'm like betting $3 a hand. Like it really adds up. I, these penny slots got me. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, one more. Have you seen like, so we got the announcement that the Kardashians, the new season on Hulu comes out in May. Have you seen these photos? Like, like, listen, last season, oh, Scott Disick was not, you. Scott Disick was not looking that good. He was looking oh very puffy. God. They talked about his uh, problems from the accident and Chloe's like, I'll introduce you to my guy. And now I'm wondering which guy she introduced him to because yeah, the new guy? photos, the new photos of Scott Disick, the, the photos are like Scott Disick out enjoying dinner. I was like, it does not look like he's enjoying dinner. He looks so gaunt. You guys, so he gaunt. Looks, he looks, and I do not say this lightly, he looks close to death in these photos. Yeah, like it, they're it, really, it they're really, 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 really concerning. Screw Kate Middleton. I want to know what, where, like, what is going on with Scott? Like, what's going on? I can't believe I haven't eaten in six months, you guys. Ah, like, it's so, like, and he was like, I feel so bad because, like, he's lost so much weight. And Scott Disick, I think, is a very good looking man. Don't you think he's a, yes. weird, like, when he, like, no, he's a but, very attractive man. Yeah, people were saying because he's always been like a Christian Bale doppelganger. They were saying he looks like Christian Bale. The machinist. Ex- or, I said X, I was going to say X Machina or whatever that. X Machina. No, you're thinking of the Machinist. Yeah, the Machinist where Christian Bale like shed like 70 pounds or something. Like he looks so gaunt. His skin looks tinged yellow. His under eyes. Dark back, circles under the eyes. He looks like Prince Philip in those car photos. Like he looks like I'm not exaggerating. Like close. And by the way, I'm not saying this as a laugh. Like I'm genuinely no, not, was concerned when funny. I saw this. It's actually concerning. Like whether it's you know from his accident or it's drugs. We all know he struggled with addiction. Maybe it's you know liver. What's it called? Cirrhosis. You know, and I was like, I was like, could this be like Ozempic? But I even think this is even too no. extreme for Ozempic. I no, I think that it's like it's not just the weight loss. It's like. It's the color of his skin. Like it looks like maybe like God forbid, John, like John liver cirrhosis or jaundice or something where it's like his liver. And this is purely speculative, you guys. Yeah, guys, don't don't know. like don't send it. I mean, I'm genuinely actually. If We're you see these photos, you'll. Well, and, th- and th- what's crazy is that so the new season of the Kardashians is coming out, and I'm like, I hope they actually tell us what's going on with Scott. But you know, it'll just be some bullshit of like. Art Vanderlei is back. I'm going to prank Chris, <laughs> you know, like something so not about what's happening and just like a stupid storyline. So I, I hope Scott Disick is okay. Um, right. Moving right along to summer house. Now I did a two hour Patreon with one of my friends, Amy field, who is such a Lindsay Stan. So she Ooh, really, admitted, it, 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 by, by the way, no, by the way, she admits that she, I mean, she was still hardcore Lindsay. She was still, I mean, like I'll give it to her. She did not, she, she was like a press secretary for, for Lindsay, like, you know, and I know you love Lindsay. I love, I love Lindsay. Lindsay too. Like I but, love Lindsay and I, I love, 
I in loving a reality television character doesn't mean blindly defending them all the time. It means that we appreciate what they bring to the reality television arts and sciences. Like Lindsay has contributed <laughs> a lot. Like Summer House would not be what it is without her. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. But she's obviously very much in the wrong this season so far. Um, there really isn't much defending her. I think that like Carl obviously isn't perfect. Like he they hired a twenty thousand dollar like career life career coach, yeah. And like at this point in your life, like maybe like I I empathize with not knowing what you want to do with your life. I totally empathize with that, but also it's like do you need a well, listen, when you attack life? Carl at the one thing that he is doing so well and so proud of, which is so sobriety. And right. she now it almost figured it's like this like trigger where she I feel like in that second argument this week, she knows that if she throws that out there, that's a sore thing of like, what are you on right now? But listen, it's probably not fun for Lit Lindsay to be told, like, how many drinks have you had? But at the same point, this is why. They shouldn't have gotten into this relationship in the first place until there was potentially uh, maybe another year under Carl's belt because you don't want this to affect his sobriety because, you know, it was made known to me. It's like, listen, that is such a dangerous thing. Like if this dude went back to drinking or drugging, it could really be the end of his life. Like that really yeah. could be. So you've got to take that so seriously. But watching it. It's just this state of like, oh no, Lindsay, like watching Amanda yeah. go down to make ramen, listen to Lindsay and then shut that door behind her and kind of collapse. I was like, oh, damn, yeah. you know, and Danielle, kudos to Danielle, Danielle trying to take herself out of the situation and not fix any problems. I thought that was amazing to watch, but I don't know, but I'm loving Summer House this, this season, even with all that, I'm loving it. I'm loving it this season too. And also outing the fact that Carl, I don't think it was like widely known that Carl's California sober. Sober with the meaning weed. Meaning yeah. that he smokes weed. Um, which I feel like maybe he didn't want that information. Again, I'm speculating maybe he didn't want that information. Well, this out is like Jimmy on Love is Blind. Like we had a conversation not to bring yes. this up on camera, you know? Yes. Like it seems like that was maybe like a low blow. Um yeah, it's like not good. And I don't think that there's any way you could argue that you were blindsided in this scenario. Like uh, bums me out so much. I know. And, I and it's sad because again, I do love Lindsay and I want the best for her. And I think that she obviously has very deep rooted abandonment issues. And that's the root. That's, that's just like the root of it. We all know well, that for Lindsay to not that's at the very end, that conversation at the beach with Lindsay and Carl, where she won't budge an inch. Like there won't like, and I'm like, dude, at least just like in some relationships, you have to like, listen and go, okay, I might not feel this way, but I want to try to listen. Like, it seems like Lindsay does not want to look at any of her behavior yet. And I think regardless if she moves forward in the next relationship or the next relationship, that is something that I, I hope because I like her so much that she actually looks at you know, her own behavior. And I'm trying to right. say that with as much love as I can, but like, and I was almost like, I was like, thank God Paige wasn't in the house this past week. Or like, I was like, hate that she would have thrown in on this, you know? And I thought Amanda for all, you know, like I would, but it is funny that Amanda and Kyle all of a sudden think they're like the top of relationship row because they oh watch Lindsay God. and Carl, you know, yeah, like, they're like we're not Amanda complimented Kyle this week. I know Amanda and Kyle's relationship is like in the gutter. But as soon as Carl and Lindsay start fighting, they're like, oh my God, Kyle, you won't believe are, like, what Lindsay just told me. Like, good. That's, yeah. that's what they bond over. And they. And then Kyle's like, do you want to go to therapy? She's like, no, I'm good. You yeah. do it yourself. No couples oh therapy. I'm good. God. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, I mean, you will never get anywhere in life not being able to take accountability for like your mistakes. Like not everything is someone else's fault. Like and li and life will keep presenting you those opportunities to show that you are not actually learning from your past. Right, right, and like in relationships, especially, like you have to be able to apologize, take accountability for your part of it. Um, and clearly, in this past episode, Carl is extremely frustrated with Lindsay's inability to to do that. Um, Carl's and also Carl's got other issues. That pencil dive that he did into the pool. What was that? Like, what was that, that weird little pencil dive that he did into the pool? Wait, that was I was so, like, whoa, I'm so glad you brought that up. Cause that was so underratedly hilarious. Like uh, Lindsay, who was it be like Gabby, like talking shit or was it Amanda? It was, I think it was Amanda. She was out there talking to Amanda. He's he in the like background doing a pencil dive. Yeah. He was like literally talking shit about Carl, like to Amanda, like on one end of the pool. And then Carl like comes in he's like, 
And he's like, all he needed was like, he's like perfect form. <laughs> he's like, yes. The no, he's like shaved his legs, you know, less tread in the pool. Uh, there's like some like there's unintentionally hilarious things in Summer House, like Lindsay trying to escape the gate at the very end of the episode. What do you think of Wes and Sierra and potentially their relationship? That is maybe he did not, except Sierra cute. thinks he might have a big mouth. Wes is cute. I understand like her trepidation because he is like, yeah, we made out like whatever but they're really cute obviously they're yeah. cute they're cute together it makes me like, like sierra more yeah um yeah, amy like uh sierra more too we're seeing like kind of a different side of her even though i still think that she's like boring <laughs> amy no yeah i i'm there with amy uh that i was did that patreon with she pointed this out she said because i was like i love wes i love wes but she was like yeah but you got to look at his pants he was wearing pants with these big stars on him and he's like i love wes too but it's kind of like Sandoval dresses and you got to clock that you got to, you got to look at it now and say, this guy dresses potentially like Tom Sandoval and just keep that information in the back of your head. And I thought that we was gotta, a very smart yeah, comment. We got to keep, keep our eyes on him because you know, we're just setting ourselves up for failure at this point. Yeah. The way that people are so obsessed with West West. I was about to say West West. West. I also West. really like Jesse Solomon. He's a nice Jewish I do do. boy. Uh, well, listen, the guy has, uh, you know, he has a lot of teeth. He has a big smile, very cocky. You know, he said, listen, I'm not trying to hit on Paige. I wouldn't like put like roadblocks in my path Wait. like that. And this next week, Craig Conover comes to the house again. Wait, my favorite thing is Paige being like, Craig would beat his ass. That's like, Craig, I'm like Craig, Craig would throw so, so many pillows at this guy. It would be yeah. crazy. It's like Jesse Solomon, six, five. So <laughs> yeah, and I think. And by the way, I think Craig would be like, "Nah, man, like, yeah, she's a hot girl. Like, uh, just don't hit on her." Like, I don't think I. I would. I would almost be scared to see Craig get angry in that way. It would break my heart. Like, he's such no, a sweetie. Yeah, let's not. Let's not revisit that. Let's not put them in a winter house together. Uh, in tragic news, Cara Delevingne, actor Keller, Cara Delevingne, her mansion half uh, burned down, her 7,000 square foot mansion. She was overseas at the time. It was an electrical fire. Her cats were saved. But I will urge people to go look at the Architectural Digest YouTube video of Cara Delevingne doing her home tour because she had a ball. She has a ball pit in her mansion, like a, just a ball pit that people could jump into. And she had this like she had this thing that I think you would like enter through what looks like a dryer. And then it spits you out in the shape of a woman's vagina. Mm -hmm. Did you ever yeah, see her, that? Her house was epic. It's really sad. And thank God her cat. By the way, I say woman's vagina. You're like, yep, her house is really epic. Yeah. Really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. That's like, yeah. Everyone knows that. Duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it was really sad. She posted about her cats. Like not, she didn't know that they made it. And she was like, oh my God, I'm devastated about my cats. Obviously as one would be. Yes, um, and it turns out that they were saved, and there were photos. Could you imagine the, the losing a pet place. like that? No, I can't. I, God forbid, I like can't even yeah, fathom it. I it's like the it. worst. But the God. pictures of the cats, like after getting rescued, like they looked traumatized. It was really upsetting. So, well, I mean, between that and the vagina tunnel, it's got to be a hard life for those cats, you know? What? Um, what? <laughs> it's a lot. Um. Okay, now this week in music, we had two huge albums come out. We have Casey Musgraves' Deeper Well, which I thought was a beautiful album. And then yes. Justin Timberlake, uh, everything yeah. I thought it was. I listened to both albums. I will say Justin Timberlake's album is an hour and 17 minutes. Wait, is an that like hour? long or short? That's long. That's oh. real long. That's Who real like. Time. Who I, no, I time? listen. I was working out to it. I was like, "Come on, an hour and seventeen minutes." But I will say, in regards to Justin Timberlake, he did a show at the Wiltern in Los Angeles last week, and In Sync finally reunited. They did four songs. They did "Bye Bye Bye." They said it's going to be me. They did their new song on the Justin Timberlake album. Uh, do you have any feelings or thoughts about In Sync reuniting? Um, like. Cool. It's kind of like that Justin Timberlake, that article that was like the air of desperation around Justin Timberlake. It's like, this is his one like move now is reuniting with NSYNC. Like I, I listened to Casey Musgraves new album. It was great. But like, yeah. I like, I didn't even know. Well, it's hard. There was, like, I think the was album a, came out like, no, like nobody was a New York. Was it a New York times article this weekend? That was like, 
talking about the aging of the pop star and like use Justin Timberlake and Jennifer Lopez and Jennifer Lopez had to cancel the last week of her concerts and tickets are not selling well for her concerts. And they were seeing Justin Timberlake in, you know, a different, but similar way of when you are a 40 some year old pop star, you know, it is such a hard hurdle. And then Justin Timberlake, there's so much negative press around him. And I don't think he necessarily, that's why, like I had Kirby Johnson. Do you know Kirby? She's awesome. She does like makeup yes. and all this stuff. Yes, She's yes. a huge NSYNC fan. And she found out and went and she gave boots on the ground on Friday's episode. And she had so much joy. And I love that about that experience. But I thought it was so interesting to think about what it takes in this year. And especially if you have any kind of negative press behind you, which Justin does with the Britney, the Janet, all of this stuff, can you really relaunch successfully? And I'm going to be curious about this, but I, I, I would, I was like, I'm going to listen to the album, just the hour and 17 minute. I was like, that is, it is just so bloated. It's such a bloated album. That's way too fucking long. That's way too <laughs> long. And also like, and I love how I had to ask you, I was like, is that long or short? And you're like, it's long. And I'm like, that is so long. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, oh. <laughs> I don't know. It's just funny that like literally no one is talking about Justin Timberlake's album like at all. Well, I mean, I don't know if that, I mean, listen, I'll try, I'll trust you on that. Like I was, I, you know, I tried to listen to it. I tried to Have be fair. people talking about it? Well, yeah, on Twitter, and it's usually like, just I hate fucking Justin Timberlake. That's what I, I see. Maybe we like follow different people because <laughs> not mean? no one's even like mentioning him. And also on Instagram, everyone's sharing like Casey Musgraves like album. They're doing like a little Spotify. I do. Show. Oh, really? I do love the Casey Musgraves album. I really, he I love great. her so but, much. Like, can you imagine if someone like if you followed someone who was like just listening to like the Justin Timberlake and they shared like like I can't even <laughs> picture someone doing that. Well, I just but got a hundred unfollows. The like the aging pop star thing, like I think J Lo and J T are maybe unique. I need to read the article that you're talking about. I'm yeah. gonna look it up, but um, I think that maybe they're like unique cases in that I don't know. Like Justin Timberlake has obviously had the controversy around him and and the Britney situation, and J Lo. It's kind of just like, what is your talent? But like, oh. I think if you are like, if you have a stronghold, like Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, like they that, will that, be 80 years old. Like, look see, at that's what I was saying is that there's going to yeah. only like, it's interesting because then if you look at Beyonce or even like, I know Taylor is young, but you know, like Lady Gaga, they're able to reinvent themselves to a certain way, you know, that it's still right. able to work. Or even like, I would say Adele, even though she's young as well, but you know, the, the album release cycles, it becomes an event. It becomes like a pantheon performer. And so that's why it's interesting that Justin Timberlake and J-Lo are on the outskirts or perceived to be on the outlets. And also Jennifer Lopez, if you're listening to this and we're hosting SNL one day, I just want to point out that Sophie said, what is your talent? I said, oh, I just want to make sure in case we're around each other that I, I still think... I <laughs> so yeah. Sophie will never host SNL with JLo. Um, so that's something to pay attention to as we wind down here. A couple more things this week. We have Vine Beverly Hills season two on Netflix, which is like, you know, Taylor's version, Mauricio's version, because Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion part three happened and not a lot happened. Kyle did not come out as people were speculating. She walked right up to the precipice and didn't go over. But did you watch it? I would I would say like, yeah, I think something's going on. Wait, no, I actually didn't watch part three. So will you tell me what happened with Kathy and Sutton that everyone was talking well, about? Kathy like is kind of a surprise guest, even though they knew she was there. He walks out on stage and Kathy's like, oh, I'm just very glad to be here. I'm very glad to be back. Da, da, da. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got some stern words. And all of a sudden you hear a, oh, 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 oh. And you like Sutton is like shaking and her blood pressure was spiking. And they had to like, literally Kathy put a hex on Sutton right in front of us. And they had to, Sutton had to leave. And then they had to take her to, uh, to the hospital and Garcelle went with her. So the final hour is like, you have no dissenting voices. You have nobody questioning anything that Kyle is saying. And I know people are divided on this, but I thought it would have been really interesting to actually have that conversation with them there. So, you know, oh, it was God. question about Morgan Mauricio and Mauricio is going to tell his side on Netflix this, this week, but it was like, whatever, it was fine. It was, it was what it was, but not a lot. I just think it'll be interesting to hear what Mauricio has to say and how interesting Mauricio really does seem to crave the spotlight himself. It's not just work anymore. He really wants to be a celebrity. Oh yeah, for sure. 
For sure. I just never like, I always thought he was like just real estate, but no, he wants to be a celebrity. He, you know, he's like, he by the way, Sheena, it. Sheena, be upset at Mauricio. Don't be upset at Ariana. He loves it. He loves it. Um, so that's happening. And then, uh, finally, are you, I mean, listen, I'm not a big Royals person, but like Rebecca's got oh, me all freaked she? out and par we can, Rebecca's got me all freaked out and paranoid that like, so Kate supposedly was going in for, uh, some kind of abdominal surgery. They said she was going to be out till Easter, but now I'm being informed that like, there's this lady Hanbury that Prince William allegedly had an affair with and that there's an lady announcement, Rose lady Rose Hanbury that supposedly like, that, that supposedly the BBC has been put on like some sort of lock by the Royal palace saying that they cannot speak about this yet. They will be. And that, that there's rumors that, that Kate Middleton and Prince William are divorcing. Like, I don't even know what to believe I anymore. That, I don't, I don't know. I, yes, I think that that might become, it's something, it's something really bad. So I think the lady Rose Henberry, the Mitchiness of Chumley. Chumley. <laughs> I think that that's a false flag. I I don't think that Rose Hanberry has anything to do with this. Do you think she's just actually just sick? I don't know. Like I, it could be a, a divorce. It could be something really embarrassing. Like it could be some affair. Maybe she went to Mexico and just got a stomach bug like you did. <laughs> Maybe she had a violent stomach bug. Um, I think that it's obviously if they were going to show proof of life and they haven't yet, proof like. Of life. It, no, besides, you're right. Like, that, you're right. Like they fucked they, up every proof of life photo, yeah. and like they fucked it all up. Where they were pretending that Kate is like hunched over, like Adobe InDesign. Like I love me though that I'm like, yeah, it looks looks good to me. Like I just moved on with my day. I was like, looks real. No, everyone right, was like, this is old. I at least thought it was like an old photo, but no, it was like literally like like it was it was Frank and edited. It yeah. was so it was so weird. I think that the fact that they haven't shown proof of life is because they either can't, like they actually can't, like she is, God forbid, in a coma, like barely alive. God forbid. I don't want this, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, that's that's what my my gut is telling me. That or it's some really, 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 you know, some sort of medical situation where it just doesn't seem like a regal, like people were saying the, what's it called? The bag. The, the colostomy you, bag. Colostomy bag where she might have the colostomy bag where again, but in that situation, I'm like, well, there's still a way maybe unless she like looks terrible. In which case it's so like, you want okay, like a newspaper know. with the date on it saying I am Kate yes. Middleton. It, the date is, this is my a proof video. Of yes. Yeah. Anything like, it's just like maybe the a TikTok video. Like I, I think I like this little life. I think I like. This <laughs> She's like, get ready with me for yeah. my colostomy. <laughs> get ready, no, get ready with me for my proof of life. <laughs> for my proof of life photo. Um, so like I, I think the fact that they haven't yet is very concerning. Like the more, the longer it goes that they haven't shown proof of life and they're letting it spiral out of control is telling me that they like actually cannot show proof of life. So it's like, maybe <sighs> there are a lot of like different scenarios. It could be that it's, it's a divorce and it's a messy divorce and they can't, you know, get her to cooperate anymore or whatever that means. Like yeah. there are a lot of different things that it could mean. Like, I don't She's know. She's going to go live at Tyler Perry's house. Like uh, <laughs> Megan and Harry had to. So what if she moves uh, to Santa Barbara? Like just that, I mean, by the way, Montecito, Oprah will welcome her with open arms. Uh, and finally, Love is Blind. Uh, what did you oh, think we're just of like the? Moving on? Okay. Well, listen. Well, I mean, listen. What else? I mean, like, I, I feel like no. I know you're busy. I'll keep talking. I just want to get you out, so it's not. I mean, unless you can, uh, unless you, what, what else is the tea? Just no, I'm sorry. Tea, I just think it's, it's so crazy. And you were just like, it is yeah, crazy. Anyway, so it is like, crazy. But like, I li listen, I, I've now been like it's so much Royals talk and I've never really focused on the Royals on this. And like, yes, it's horrifying and horrible, but like people are losing their GD minds. And like, it is like freaking me out because it's like, 
the, you know, they're telling me about the firm and like, they've always done this. And like, the thing um, is if Prince William, if Prince William cheated, like it's doing the exact same thing that his dad did to Diana. No. And like, as a kid, he saw his mom, he heard his mom crying through the door. And to think that he would then potentially make the same mistake, uh, like the same mistake. And he is heir to the throne. Also Prince Charles, I mean, King Charles is probably going to have to abdicate in the next couple of months after they spent $200 million on his coronation. There is oh, so much insanity behind that, but it's like, what wigs me out is that nobody is coming forward with actual accurate information. So everybody's right. speculating in the weirdest ways. And it, I mean, it just, it feels like a big time Vanderpump rules. It feels like Scandaball. Like Tom's like, Oh, I understand what I understand what those guys are going through, dude. But people are, I like how people are calling it water. Kate. Is that what they're <laughs> Yeah, that's it's water. Kate. Um, but yeah, I mean like a princess is like maybe potentially like no longer alive like i don't know it just feels like kind of i see i never thought i see i truly like that was a like i just never thought she was i just there's no way she, she's passed away there's just no way there's no way i you're you're is probably there? right but like i don't know where do you think about at? queen elizabeth queen elizabeth knew that this was going to potentially happen to her family uh, you know, King Charles, like, always fought for less, uh, you know, like, making the royals smaller when Queen Elizabeth always wanted to make it larger, like, knight people, give people, like, appointments, all of this stuff. And it, it's so sad that Queen Elizabeth, you know, year like, less than two years after she passes, it's already up for, like, this huge test of, like, shaking the public confidence once again, you know, and then on the same day, Meghan Markle, you know, and this, she announces her lifestyle, like her Instagram oh. with her new moniker and all of this stuff. Like what a time to release, you know, what you've been like, Hey guys, this is what I've been up to. Like what a time to release that on top of everything. And that's why I don't think she died. I don't think she, had, if, if, if she had died, I don't think Meghan Markle would have done that. You're right. That's all. a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, love is blind. Love is blind. Anyways, the, the fun, like the reunion. Did you watch the reunion? Did you like it? Um, yes. I thought it was weird they, that we didn't get an update on Chelsea and Jimmy. Like they were like the only. Yeah, why do you think that was? Cause Chelsea yeah. in interviews said, yeah, we're really good friend. Like she gave more information to access Hollywood than she did the reunion. I, I don't know. That was like really weird. Like, yeah, no, like Nick and Vanessa need to learn how to fucking host. No, they did better than I thought they would. They did it's, better this time around, but still. Yeah. But still. Um, but then the, the weird, the, the Trevor, Trevor, <laughs> Trevor comes out and Nick's like, what the fuck did you do, bro? Get the fuck off my stage. Like, I love that Trevor, like, you know, listen, the guy obviously is an idiot, self-admitted, but like, I love that he comes out there and Nick's like, yeah, man, you can leave now if you want. Like a host is like supposed to not like really take sides and stuff. And I, I thought that was it. Like, yeah. Get, get, get the hell off the stage, dude. Oh my God. That was like painful painful was and there I, any like, takeaways because i thought it was a great season but and i thought the reunion was so much better than beverly hills because i watched them back to back but uh you know i, I didn't need to see the old cast members oh my god the alumni, love is blind. the alumni club like yeah, i didn't care about so that cool like being like love is blind alumni like okay Okay. And jessica is going to be on perfect match now and somebody uh, Maritza sent me a photo of jessica like how she used to look like did you see that photo floating around? No. Uh, I'm going to, uh, you, Wait, you will lose. I didn't even realize what I was looking at when it was, I was like, what, what am I looking at here? Um, it was, I, I, I couldn't even, uh, I'll find it and send it to you. I can't, I'm trying to find it, but, um, it's wild. So love is blind. It's over. I'm glad it happened, but I thought the reunion was enjoyable, but not like anything insane. Just Chelsea and Jimmy. We don't know what's happening. Yeah. And also like AD and clay, like AD is like, I show him every day, like what he's missing. And it's like, but you're still like hanging out with him all the time. Like you're still like giving access to him. I can't believe that AD went on a date with that other dude, that weirdo Matthew. that was in Matthew. Like what was oh up with that? God. I was like AD. What? Cause I, I don't know. I obviously Clay had some real deep seated issues, especially with his father's history and stuff. So right. I don't know. He's a very charming guy and he seems very confused where he is in the world. But uh, I don't know. Good season of Love is Blind. And also before we end, I just want to be gigantic. Hey, Kanye, if you're going to perform, don't welcome Puff Daddy of all people with open arms, you doofus. Like that's not the person to align with right now. I mean, I, I just, I'm so, I, I'm so sorry. I'm just so not down with any. Con I, I just I saw that press release of that Puff Daddy rolls up to oh Rolling God. Loud to see Kanye's listening party, and I was just like, "Yeah, man, why? Hey, let's 
Let's throw to, like let's throw the BTK killer in there too. Let's have it's like this is just wild. It is wild. What a wild world we we wow. live in. Hitler light and Harvey Weinstein 2.0. Like it's, it's wild. And then you have kids out there jumping around kids out there. Not even, he's not even performing. It's like a listening party. And like, that is our culture right now. And that was so disappointing oh to see. God. So I usually try not to be too negative, but that was really what a, oh in that, and, and, the puff daddy of it all, man. If you go back and read the Cassie court papers of anything, what a, dis I mean, no, more and more shit is coming out on that guy. Disgusting. Horrific. Absolutely horrific. Just and this is, I mean, this, this isn't like Army Hammer shit. Like this is like surpasses all. I mean, like there is so much documentation now about what this gentleman has. I mean, his freak out parties and all. I mean, just, I, I, would, I was shocked. Like I honestly was shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, it's. Anyways, have a great week. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Oh, so I, Sophie, what else, what else is uh, anything to, uh, no, what are you, what are you I, watching? Anything to keep an eye out on him? Literally Survivor. I'm in Survivor world. Um, here, wait, let me read any Survivor people out there. I'm staying under season 20 right now, like old school Survivor when they're like fishing and they're not given bug spray. <laughs> like you'll see in the early, now apparently they give them sunscreen and bug spray, but in the early seasons, they like Richard didn't. Hatch on the first season. The guy was like just naked running around. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, let me, I I'm going to do cook islands next, which is Parvati's first season. Oh, cool. and then I'm going to do Micronesia, which is when Parvati returns. And then I'm going to do China and then I'm going to do the Amazon. Yeah. So this, that's like my, my, rotation. are you ever going to like catch up to where we are now? That's going to take me a while, but yeah. Oh, I was like, well, I was like, I'm watching it every week. I love it. Like, should, uh, I, should I watch the current season while I'm watching the old? Yes. Season? Yes. Okay, maybe I'll do 100%. that. And we can talk about survivor. Yeah. And also okay. if you do dip into UK traders, let me know, but no, I Sophie am. Ross also because Henry loves the traders. Oh, let me know what Henry thinks. And I think he, but give it like two episodes. It's, at first it's going to feel really weird, but then you're going to love it by episode three. Um, Okay, you guys, Sophie Ross, go follow her on all the socials. Wish her well for wedding planning 2024, her stomach virus, meeting Ariana. It's been a banner week for Sophie. So go check everything that she does out and uh, we will talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.